Today, I will be doing an in-depth training on the usage of the Table of Authorities feature in Lexis for Microsoft Office. The version that I am using is 8.0.11. Before I talk about the details of running Prepare TOA, I want to talk about setting up your defaults. To set up your defaults, select Options on the LexisNexis ribbon. This will open an Options screen. First, select Citation Format, and then from the drop-down menu, select how you would like your citations formatted in your document. You may select either the Blue Book or one of the State Style Manuals. Next, you want to select either underlined or italicized, depending on how you would like your case names and citations to be formatted. In addition, you may select bolded, and you may want to select the option to not format citations and quotations. If you select this option, then quoted citations will not be added to your table of authorities. Next, select Table of Authorities. First, you'll want to select either Autocorrect or Do Not Autocorrect. If you select Autocorrect, then citations that appear in your Table of Authorities will be automatically corrected to comply with your selected citation format. This does not change the citations in your document. And if you select the Do Not Autocorrect option, then citations that appear in your Table of Authorities will not be automatically corrected to comply with the selected citation format, but slight revisions will be made, such as the removal of any introductory signals and pin pages. Again, any citations in your document will not be changed. For your layout, you may want to select the jurisdiction specific headings and if you select this option you may select under the federal courts any of these options or you may select a state court option or you may want to select the case and statute headings option and then select to have separate federal and state citation headings, or even a rules heading. For your sorting options, you have the option to either have entries sorted by order of appearance or alphabetically. For your content options, you might want to select to list citations that are mentioned in citing or quoting parentheticals separately. And if you select the Merge option, then any federal statutory, regulatory, rule citations, or state statutory citations that have the same number or section but different subsections will be merged into one entry. For our California customers, you may want to select Set the Page Number Format to Continue from Previous Section. This allows continuous pagination and we have a use passum option that you may want to select if you would like to use passum instead of page references and if you select this option you may choose either two through ten or more page references to be replaced by passum we have an option to place party names on a separate line and also an option to include a pages heading above the page number column. Again, for our California customers, you may want to select align your table of authorities with pleading line numbers. For the overall table of authorities heading, you may type a custom heading in this field, and you may select the font style from the drop down and then the font size 
from this drop down. If you do not see a size that you need in the drop down, you may type directly into this field, such as if I want 12.5 font size, then I may type that in. You also have the option to have your overall table of authorities heading bold, underlined, italicized, centered, and you may use either uppercase or title case. You have those same options for individual category headings. And then for your citation entries, you may choose the font style and size. When you have your default set up, then click OK. And those default settings will be retained for future documents. I would like to point out that it's a best practice to confirm your selected style guide by clicking on Set Site Format and making sure there is a check mark to the left of your style guide. And also, when you're first utilizing Lexis for Microsoft Office on your document, you'll want to perform a Remove Citation Metadata and a Remove Hyperlinks. This will remove any possible field codes or hyperlinks that may interfere with the performance of Lexis for Microsoft Office. Now before I run Prepare TOA, I want to mention that it is optimal to run CheckSite format prior to running Prepare TOA. This would allow you to check and correct the format of any citations in your document. Now we'll run Prepare TOA by clicking on that option in the ribbon. A window opens showing you what tasks are being completed and then the right hand pane will open showing you a preview of your table of authorities. At the top of the screen, there's a customized format option. If you click on that, a customized format window opens, showing you the same options as we just saw in the table of authorities option screen. But if you change the options on this screen, it will not change your default settings. This will only change the settings for this particular document. At the top right, we have a reporting feature. You may send a snapshot of the right hand pane, which includes the category headings, your citation entries, and page numbers, either via email or print. If you would like to add a citation to your table of authorities, for example, if there's a citation in your document that didn't get pulled into your table of authorities, you may add it by highlighting the citation in your document and then selecting Add Citation. That citation will be pulled into your Table of Authorities and placed under the Other category. If you would like to add a new heading to your Table of Authorities, select Add Heading, and then in the Text field, type in your new category heading and click on Add. The heading will be placed at the very bottom of the right-hand pane. And then you may move entries underneath your new heading by selecting the checkbox to the left of the entry and going up to Manage Citations and then selecting Move Citations. In the window that opens, you'll find your new category heading Select that, and then select Move Citations. And those citations will be moved underneath your new category heading. 
If you would like to move a category heading as well as the entries underneath it to a different position in your table of authorities, for example, I would like to move this category heading up above other, you would just click on the heading and then go to the right column and click on the up arrow. That will move the category heading as well as any entries underneath it up above other. If you would like to move entries underneath a category heading either up or down, you may do so by clicking on the entry and then selecting either the up or down arrow. In this case, I'll move this entry down one position. If you would like to delete one entry, you may click on it and you will see an X to the left of the entry. If you select that X, a pop-up window will open, notifying you of the entry that will be deleted. And then select Delete, and that entry will be deleted. If you would like to delete uh, several entries that are under one category heading, you may do so by selecting the checkbox to the left of the entry and going up to Manage Citations and then select Delete Citations and then Remove. And those citations are then removed from your Table of Authorities. They are not removed from your document. Category headings may also be edited, and you may do so by clicking on the heading. And then clicking on the pencil icon. And then typing in the text field. Category headings may also be deleted if there are no entries underneath the category heading by clicking on the X to the left of the category heading. If you click on any of the entries in the right hand pane, you will be taken to the location of that citation in your document where you can review the entry. Or you may select the page number to be taken to a citation in the document. After you're finished reviewing your citations and setting up your table of authorities in the right hand pane, you will go to where you would like your table of authorities to be inserted. Place your cursor at that location and then in the right hand pane select insert TOA. You'll get a pop-up reminding you that the table of authorities will be inserted at your current cursor position. Click OK. And the table of authorities will be inserted into your document and the right hand pane will close. You can scroll through and take a look at your table of authorities. See if it's set up the way you would like it to be. In your table of authorities, you may click on any of the page numbers, which are jump links, which jump down to the location of that entry in your document. To quickly go back to your table of authorities, Select Update TOA and then scroll to Table of Authorities on the drop down. If you want to scroll through, take a look at your Table of Authorities. If there are changes that need to be made, then you'll want to select Update TOA. This will open the right hand pane again with your preview, and you may make any changes there. For example, if you would like to move 
a category heading and its entries. We'll move it up above statutes. When any updates are completed in the right hand pane, then you'll want to select Update TOA to see those changes in your table of authorities. If you need to make manual edits to your table of authorities, this should be done as a final step because any changes that you make in the table of authorities that's within your document will not be retained when you update your TOA. That completes the Table of Authorities training. Thank you for your attention.